Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul with RP1 series in Kerbal Space Program 1.3.1. In this episode, we are going to begin by dealing with this atmospheric analysis satellite contract, which requires us to get into a 641 by 231 orbit or more, and carrying a barometer and thermometer. Otherwise, it doesn't require solar panels or anything fancy, and I've gone all the way down to the bare minimum here, which is the upper stage is the satellite. Uh, this happens from time to time in space history. Uh, most famously, I think, is the situation where the entire body of the Atlas rocket was the satellite. It was the first communication satellite score, and the communication apparatus was not designed to separate from the Atlas rocket. So, yeah, but in this case, it's just the second stage that we're dealing with. It is a very able stage, which means two AJ-10s like that. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to have to deal with that again. On the right side, much cheaper, faster on the whole build time, and the rollout cost is minimal, at least compared to the other rockets we saw in the previous episode, and even the 17-ton rocket. And it seems like it's highly sensitive to the engine, um, this engine in particular. Oddly enough, the Vanguard engine is worse, and that's why that 18-ton or 17, 18-ton rocket was worse than this. Because you can take a look, if I take off this engine, okay, 5,492 is the base here, and it was like 6,900 with that one engine. But let me put on a Vanguard engine. It's 7,468. So again, uh, with the Vanguard engine, the rollout cost is 2,000 more with just one Vanguard engine. And we have two Vanguard engines on that 17-ton rocket. So that's why it all goes haywire. Whereas this one only increases it by 1,500. Why the Vanguard engine should increase it by 2,000 where this, a much more powerful engine, only makes it go up by 1,500, I don't know. Um, apparently somebody thought that Vanguard engine was just, in addition to being horribly, um, what you call it, uh, prone to failures, uh, it is also going to cost more on rollout costs. So that's why that one rocket had that problem. And you can see how sensitive it is to the engines in particular. So yeah, we're not gonna be using Vanguard anymore. I guess somebody really hates it. Uh, then, I mean, there's there's a reason for that, but in this case, I feel like this engine being larger and having its own complexities, frankly, probably, well, okay, don't mess with it. Now that we've got it, now that we've got it, let me not encourage people to mess with it. So here we are, and this is the Aldebaran, uh, Aldebaran, uh, I don't know exactly how to pronounce it, but anyway, I named after the star. I don't know why I named it after the star, but I'll take it. And this is what we're going to build. We have 66 days to fill the contract. And if we rush build this, I think we can make it. But will it work? We once again have two AJ-10s up here. Uh, there was not much avoiding that. I could have had one AJ-10, but I don't think we would have gotten it up to this orbit. Even as it is, I don't know if we can get it up to this orbit in particular. Uh, it still, still says 9,373 meters per second. It's got a healthy thrust to weight ratio initially, and of course on the second stage, but still, it's going to be a bit tight. We have the little fins here, just in case, but yeah, alright. So I'm going to build one of these, and then we're going to talk more about other things. So, as we recall in the previous episode, um, when I brought out this core, we discovered a rollout cost of 3,200 and five day build time. And somebody mentioned or suggested that for the smaller rockets, I launch it off of the runway instead of from the VAB. Let's take a look at what this is like in the SPH. Now at this point, the SPH is completely unupgraded. There's been no upgrades, no additional build points for the runway or anything like that. If we take the Able Avionics core, we see that far from the 3,200 we had before, the rollout cost is 247, which is remarkable. It's still, you know, more than double the actual cost stated here, but that's that's quite a big gap, I gotta say. 
So they really do penalize you for making your stuff bigger than it needs to be. I mean, the runway or the launch pad. And it's 30 day build time on its own compared to five in the VAB. And that leads to the problem with trying to do it this way because we haven't upgraded this. Oh, I can't just drag that. Um, if we even tried to get the, the Pioneer rocket, the one that I pointed out before, the 17 ton rocket that we had a problem with. Uh, first of all, it's too tall like this because the SBH height limit is only 15 meters because it's meant for aircraft. But we could sort of refactor it a little bit if we wanted to. Um, the rollout cost is less, but not that much less. Um, still, it would be better. But of course, with the build time being unupgraded, it's going to take 512 days. So it's not really an option. So in any case, it was interesting to see the difference in the rollout cost between the VAB and the SPH. And of course, if I had to go back and do it, I would probably wait on the further launch pad upgrade. That's certainly hurting me. Uh, I don't seriously need to make things 150 tons at this point yet. But uh, yeah, that's uh, biting into my budget. But we still have enough to launch about 10 rockets. So we'll see how that goes. Now, somebody mentioned that in test flight difficulty settings, there was a way to stop it from having ignition failure initially. I think that was the thing. But um, I don't seem to have test flight settings here. Um, and if we go into test flight settings over here, these settings, oh, okay, difficulty and performance settings. No, I don't have that. So maybe it's a more updated version. To slide enabled. Yeah, I guess I just don't have that. Now, of course, uh, somebody also mentioned that we can do R&D on the engines. I'm aware of that. Uh, I, I do prefer not to be nickel and dimed on all these things uh, and to just fly it and test it like that. But uh, let's take a look at the practical situation there with the Aldebaran rocket. So, if we right click on this, R&D, the engine. Um, part flight data meets or exceeds maximum lab R&D amount. So, apparently we're good enough on that engine. And how about this one? Part flight data, well, our, our data on the AJ-10 is unsurprisingly 10,000 data units. So it meets or exceeds the maximum lab R&D amount already. In fact, uh, I probably reached that amount even before the failures of the previous episode because we used, we used the AJ-10 pretty substantially, right? Uh, so yeah, we've already maxed it out. <laughs> that's, so that's not going to solve our problems. Okay, so rolling out the Aldebaran rocket, uh, that's going to take 5 days and 21 hours, which means... Uh, I, I rush built the other Aldebaran rocket and it looks like it'll fall just short of the the time requirement for this contract, so that sucks, but uh, there we are. Incidentally, the probe core on top, and that's really what the cone is at the top of the rocket, uh, the probe core is still at 100% utilization, but that was more because I needed the shape. If I tried to lower utilization, it'd be pretty blunt, if you will. So in order to make it a cone, I just went with 100% utilization per normal. Also, it would be more expensive, which I don't know if that affects the rollout cost, but I'll have to check that. But in any case, it would probably affect the build time. I left off the solar panels because they really affect the build time. Okay, well, uh, nothing to wait for. SAS on, throttle is up. And, yep, I think we're good to go. Ignition. And launch. Obviously these side pods are 0.48 meter tanks because that's what we have tooled for. And the 1.2 meter, the other tooling, would be too big. It's already wiggling just a little bit.
Smart ESS has eight fins to deal with. It's probably not thrilled with that. Okay, so we need a periapsis of 231 kilometers. It'd be handy if this stage just got us to that. Delta V is looking fine. There's 231. Okay, that'll do the trick. RCS on separation. Okay, I have attitude control thrusters on this stage by necessity. And we have the thermometer and barometer here. So we are ready to go on that. Let's make sure it's happy with that. Well, we have to actually do the pressure scan and temperature scan. Selling fuel down. And two engines. Let's hope. Ignition. All right. It looks like we have two engines. Do we have enough delta V, though? To make orbit is easy. To get to that uh, 641 kilometers is a different thing. This is actually testing another question mark. These, of course, require high pressure tanks. This one is a high pressure tank. This one, however, is not. This is a regular tank. And actually, um, let me increase its fuel flow priority. So I was wondering whether they had resolved that little um, potential for cheatery. If not, I'm, I'm just going to blatantly take advantage of it. <laughs> uh, looks good. Shut down. Okay, we are within the right orbital parameters. I don't need the RCS going. Uh, well, transmit that. It doesn't seem to be checking for stable orbit, though. I guess maybe that, that's after I do these. Yep, it's now checking for stable orbit. That should not be a problem. Phew. Well, good times. See, sometimes you just have to keep it simple. I tried. I tried to make a, a rocket that would be used for multiple payloads, but it turns out that it just likes having a rocket meant for a specific mission at the end of the day after all. Okay, stable orbit confirmed. Contract fulfilled. Well, thank goodness. 54,000. Not, not really the greatest payout for all the mess that we've been through, but hey, it's something. All right, let's go back to the Space Center and see what else we can do. I don't know if scrapping our backup Aldebaran rocket is going to help as far as building the next rocket. After all, it has an upper stage that is compatible with our very able Juno, very able Atlas. So it could help if uh, it worked like that, but I don't have Scrapyard. So I don't know what scrapping does except maybe give it, give us back the funds, but we could sure use the funds. So I'm going to scrap it anyway. And uh, what we want is for the very able Atlas with the Goober bus and the ComSat payload to finish up. And hopefully we can launch that. Let's take a look at our contracts. So we're aiming to do this ComSat uh, contract, but we'll wait until the, the rocket is built before picking it up. I also wanted to do this navigation satellite and weather satellite contract, perhaps on the same rocket. This requires 100 units of NAVSAT payload, uh, and sent, uh, it has to be sent to 45 degree inclination and 300 kilometer orbit. So that's that. This one only needs 29 units of the weather sat payload, but it wants an eccentricity of 0 0.005. It has to be below that. So basically a circular orbit. Uh, otherwise, it's compatible with this other contract. In other words, the same uh, rock could be used to deliver both these payloads. And 
The question is whether I can get it within that eccentricity. Again, I'm not going to pick it up until we're ready for it, I think, though it says offer expires within a certain amount of time. But yeah, well, I think we should do these. Now, of course, uh, doing the lunar missions would be a lot more lucrative, and uh, I'm itching to do them because we're already behind schedule as far as the date's concerned, and we have been from the very beginning. Uh, somebody had mentioned that I didn't spend enough time with sounding rockets. Well, um, I mean, I'm sure I've done everything wrong, <laughs> but uh, it's just that I'm looking at the dates and I'm sort of feeling like, you know, early on I was feeling like, well, it's taking so long to build the rockets, I should probably just go ahead and aim for orbit. So if I was supposed to set, spend more time on sounding rockets, I wish the sounding rockets had been quicker to construct. Anyway, uh, we will proceed as planned and I'll show you the rocket I come up with for the navigation and um, weather satellite payload. All right, well, since the Aldebaran worked so well for us, I decided to go with Aldebaran B, even though functionally this is a very able Juno rocket. Same sort of thing, two of these. Except the upper stage uh, continues to have the same thruster arrangement I put on the Aldebaran. And, of course, the same core arrangements with this avionics core in a conical form. But now it has a full payload on top, but not one that separates from it which again saves us from some mass and some build time. Uh, so this is our payload. Uh, this is, it doesn't show it all there, but uh, when you hover over it, it does. NavSat payload uh, and WeatherSat payload. So uh, we've got 29 units. We needed 29 units of WeatherSat payload. That's there. We've got 14 units of NavSat in this tank, 43 here and 43 here for a total of more than 100, which is what that contract wanted. Of course, we've got the tooling for a, uh, 0.48 by 0.48 meter tank on the service module. So that's why we have three tanks like this instead of just one big one. And so I've got solar panels just in case, though they didn't require it. Uh, I haven't picked up the contracts yet. Of course, we'll build the rocket first. And I've put extra HTP so that we can circularize our orbit at that very precise eccentricity. Uh, so that's why I've filled this up with 40 HTP and kept the four, uh, actually put 48 in here instead of 24. I've also set the fuel priority to minus 9 here because this is not the pressurized tank. This one is. I decided not to go with making a huge non-pressurized tank in a tiny flimsy pressurized tank. Uh, not because I'm afraid of cheating, <laughs> because but because we have the tooling for these tank sizes as it is, and I didn't want to pay for another tooling. So yeah, uh, that is why we have it like that. I had to underfuel these side, not really boosters, uh, side tanks um, underutilized to 78%, and that is because we we're only carrying one of the Thor avionics units, and that's 65 tons, and then we have another five tons on this avionics unit, which sums up to 70 tons, and as you can see, we're right on that line. So that is what we have. It should certainly have enough delta V to get us to a 300 by 300 orbit or higher. It just said minimum periapsis 300 kilometers. And after that, the HTP is going to have to do its work to fix whatever um, problem I had with the orbit because I didn't do it uh, due to burn precisely. Okay, so Aldebaran B, 77 days to build. 8,000 rollout cost, and yep, save and build. All right, so I picked up the first ComSat contract, and what we have here is can generate solar power. It's already checked that off. It's already checked off that we've got ComSat payload of 150 units. So all we have to do now is go for an inclination of 35 degrees with a minimum perigee of 850 kilometers and apogee of more than 4,500. So what I figure is, because we do have the Goober bus on here with its hydrazine, not hydrazine, HTP right now, uh, so we have that uh, 83 units of HTP and the RCS thrusters to push it forward. What I figure is we're going to go into a low periapsis orbit of about 200 kilometers or so, maybe 300, and boost our apoapsis first 
Then at apoapsis, we'll use the goober bus in order to lift the periapsis to the requirement. And we'll see if that works. Mm, the kerosene is underfueled because uh, this doesn't really get off the ground very quickly if we have it fully fueled, so that is nominal. Uh, throttle up, SAS is on. And here we go. Ignition. And launch. Now we actually want a different heading. We would like uh, something that's going to give us some inclination. Let's go for 80 degrees. Alright, looking smooth through max Q. The booster engines are ready for 2 minutes and 15 seconds at this point. Uh, I don't want to overuse the LR-105 like last time. Uh, let's go for 2 minutes 25. Okay, set. Okay, the booster engines are off. It's still gonna go past five minutes on the, the sustainer engine. Delta V-wise, we're fine. Still feel like we need to do more on the inclination, so... Okay, getting close to the end here on this stage. Okay, that will hopefully be good enough. We still need 1.7, 1.8 degrees of inclination, but separation, RCS. Okay, and we're gonna coast. Let's get rid of the fairings. All right. Okay, let's get started. RCS is ready. Oh, hmm. Oh, these, this doesn't have the orientation thrusters like I do on, on the Aldebaran rocket. Oh well, okay. Um, zero pitch, settle the fuel down, and throttle up, and ignition. We've got two good engines. Well, hopefully we got through all of the engine failures in the previous episode, maybe? Okay, about to make orbit, but we're gonna continue burning. We need an apoapsis of 4,500 kilometers. And actually, well, we can't do too much. We're gonna have to rely on the goober bus for the periapsis lift. And the higher we go on the apoapsis, the better on that. So I'm just going to let it burn out. Okay, RCS off for now. Yep, it's satisfied with the apoapsis, so that's good. Um, we should probably not have this stage hang around with for... Well, it does, probably doesn't matter, actually. It's HTP, can't really be used, though. Yeah, we'll just let it go. Okay, it's goober bus time. Okay, well, we're nearing apoapsis. I don't exactly know how long it's going to take for this to do its thing with the RCS thrusters, but here we go. Got to make sure it doesn't reduce the inclination too much. That's one thing. We are apparently accidentally spin stabilized, sort of. Not really. So we need to make some changes to the goober bus. And there it is. Even though it was a bit more complicated than it needed to be, we just have to wait the two minutes for it to check that it's in a stable orbit, and this one will be done. 
All right, contract complete. We have done the business and things are looking up. Things are looking up. Let's try for that weather satellite, nav satellite combination. Though I sort of wish we had something like the Goober bus rather than, though I do need to reorient those thrusters rather than the just the thrusters on the second stage that we have there. But we'll see. We'll see if it works out for us. Oh dear, they've decided to change the terms on me. The navigation satellite is still at least 100 units, uh, 45 degree inclination, 300 me uh, kilometers. But uh, the weather sat payload, because of course the other one had expired and they gave me a new one, now they want 42 units. So that's different. So we can't really do that one with this one. For now, I'll just pick up the one that we can do and see if we can do it. And we'll have to wait on the weather satellite until we're sure that we can do this. Okay, should note that I did add fins to it after what I showed you in the VAB. I decided to edit the rock that was being built. And our backup also has fins. Uh, so 45 degrees per G, 300 kilometers. Uh, no requirement on eccentricity on the navigation satellite contract. So that's, a, you know, that's good. Uh, we're right above 70 tons vessel mass, but it's allowing me to use SAS, so it should be satisfied with the avionics, uh, given that the launch clamps are going to release and we are going to be under 70 tons. So all is well. Ignition. And launch. All right, so we should be aiming for about 55 degrees, I think, to get a 45 degree inclination. And we've got a pretty healthy thrust to weight ratio, so let's get started. It's an awkward looking rocket, admittedly. Okay, we're hitting some of that max Q instability. I'll just leave it pointing prograde right now. Oh, we lost performance in one engine. Let's see what exactly has happened. Um, lost thrust. A specific impulse is fine though. So just loss of thrust. That's going to cause problems as far as the burn time. Let's just make sure we get above 300 kilometers in apoapsis. So the other one also had a loss of thrust, but still specific impulse is fine. I'm going to switch it off before we start spinning around. We're above 300 kilometers there, so that's good enough. All right. Separation. RCS on. Forward. Okay, and this has a proper thruster arrangement. Okay. Fuel is settled. Engage. I hope we're not short of delta V here. I think the inclination might have thrown me for a loop here. Oh, so we're carrying all that extra HTP that was meant for the WeatherSat payload. Okay, that's good enough as far as the inclination. Okay. Well, hopefully the HTP can handle it. Let's see. Pitch up, pitch up, pitch up. It was sort of mishandled on my part. I think I could have had a better trajectory. Okay, and at this point with the periapsis outside of the atmosphere, I think we can wait until apoapsis before doing the rest of it. Ah, no connection right now. Past apoapsis. Okay, we've reacquired. Orbit prograde, please. 
If I was aiming for an eccentricity under 0 0.005, I think we could have done it. Okay, that should be good enough. Yep, we're just waiting the two minutes. Okay, we have fulfilled the contract. It's not a huge amount of funds, but we have fulfilled three contracts in a row now. And that's pretty darn satisfying after the fiasco in the previous episode. Um, we will aim to do the weather satellite one. I mean, this rocket should be able to handle that as well. And we'll see that in the next episode. And I'll also try and queue up uh, an attempt at a lunar rocket. We'll see. So, with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.